지어 모두 다 빨리 박수 쳐 기다리지 말고 서둘러 무슨 내란 밝혀서 to feed you rap so I see that you are back below so fly All right, Steve Kim, uh, got a great topic for you today. Tom Brady uh, has taken a shot at younger NFL players and younger athletes. Uh, I think this is a part of Tom Brady's march back to an NFL team. Uh, But let's take a listen to uh, Tom Brady talking about young, spoiled players. I think the biggest problem with a lot of kids these days is all about them. It's all about them, their brand, their social media. And then when it's about me and then not about us, well, there's no way to succeed as a team if all you're doing is thinking about how selfish it is for you to get the attention. It's cool to show the world how great you are, but the most aspiring thing is how great you can make others. That's the point of life is what we could do. How do you help other people finish the race, not just you? Mm. Mm. Uh, Mm. I love that Tom Brady. I miss that Tom Brady. I welcome him back to the NFL. Anyway, oh, y- your geez. thoughts there. Is he, uh, is he just the old man yelling, get off my lawn? Okay, you're, you're still probably waiting for the fat boys to reunite. Look, it's not going to happen, but I, I love those statements. And this is what he needs to do when he's on television. Just be brutally honest and try to be the best white version of Charles Barkley for the National Football League. But, Jason, I think what he's saying is, number one, based on his own experience, And I've maintained this for a while after reading a few books, talking to a player that's seen it up close and watching the dynasty, coachability. And and there's a theme that goes on in terms of what is the Patriot way. And for Tom Brady, the Patriot way was, despite being the most famous and most accomplished football player of the past generation, or at least quarterback, he allowed himself to be absolutely coached, coached hard, screamed at, shouted at, harangued and be treated like everybody else. And time and time again, Jason, the one of the reasons why he was able to sustain his greatness or allow that organization to win is he took a little less money. And I, I'm not saying that he had to go out there and have people Venmo him a little bit of uh, extra cash there for spending money, but he took below market deals based on his caliber so that everyone else could flourish and eventually himself as the quarterback of the New England Patriots and he sees all these other players and all these other athletes in other sports taking time off. Uh, they're just taking mental health breaks, which he absolutely hates. And then not playing hard, not caring about winning. And for a guy like Brady, it probably disgusts him. I'm going to go a little bigger picture and, and somewhere Tom Brady probably doesn't want me to go because uh, these thoughts aren't running through his head when he's saying this. But but what he's actually representing, and again, he's not thinking about this, but but the reason why Tom Brady thinks that life and sports are about uplifting your teammates and everybody around you, part of the reason he thinks that way is because his needs as a child were met. He had two devoted parents and an upbringing that he probably thought was tremendous and great. And so what he's looking at is a different generation of athletes whose needs weren't met for either their families were torn apart and and their father wasn't in the home or their mother wasn't in the home or, or just something, neglect, or even the two working parents that their kids are actually the side hustle and making money and sitting inside a cubicle is the real number one job. And so he's looking out at athletes who were neglected in their upbringing. And so, and that brings on a sense of entitlement. I'm owed something. And when your mentality is I'm owed something, it's like, I gotta get more and more and more because I'm owed something. Where because Tom Brady's needs were met, he feels like, hey, what can I do for everybody else? I'm gonna get more than enough. I'm sustaining, look, and other people are like, like, he's married to Giselle. She's worth as much money as him. That That is another part of it. But but I do think he's looking at a generation of athletes who come from non-traditional upbringings, and that's not just divorced parents or parents that were never married, but even parents that are together that just don't prioritize developing their kids the way previous generations do. And so this previous generation is more selfish 
because they got a hole in their heart, man. And so I've gone really big picture there, but your reaction. Well, Jason, there's no doubt. Look, he grew up in a traditional nuclear family out there near the Bay Area. And you see pictures of him dressed up as little Joe Montana as they went to games at Candlestick Park. Uh, but I didn't realize this. He had several sisters. And he'll tell you, uh, at a similar age, when they're all growing up, he was not the best athlete. He really wasn't. And, and I think that weight on him is like, hey, I got to grind here. And let, let's go through his journey. People don't realize this. And I, I know a lot of USC fans are going to be upset I didn't know that USC basically pulled a scholarship for him for a quarterback out of Illinois who was a dual threat back when they weren't running the spread. I think his name was Quincy Woods. But Mike Riley, the quarterback coach at USC, said that basically ruined us at SC because we could have had Tom Brady. So he gets to Michigan. He's basically the seventh quarterback on the depth chart. And even as a senior, when he was still developing and was a pretty good Big Ten quarterback, he was relegated to sharing snaps with Drew Henson. So he's always had to work and grind. And I still remember him leading this great comeback, Jason. I'll never forget it against LeBar Arrington, your old friend, and Brandon Short and Courtney Brown. They were in Happy Valley. It was late in his senior year. Michigan is down by 10 with about eight minutes to go. And I'm thinking, game over. Tom Brady showed signs right then that he was a little bit different and he was a little bit special. Then he had a great game against Alabama in his Michigan finale in the Orange Bowl. Never forget it. The mixed extra point, game's over. And with all of that, he was the 199th pick in that draft. Okay, so Jason, I remember watching a uh, documentary on this. I think it's called The Brady Six. It was one of the 30 for 30s. Do you know to this day when Brady talks about his draft day experience waiting at home with his parents getting passed up by the likes of Spurgeon Wynn, you know he still tears up? The guy actually gets, and this is, a year, this is like five Super Bowls in, the guy still gets very emotional, and he has to, I'm like, wow, you care that much about that slight. I think that says a lot about Tom Brady, and I think that's part of the reason why he reached the heights that he did. I'm going to go back to my point, just uh, Dan Hurley, the UConn basketball coach, just recently made the point about the key to his system is recruiting kids that have great parents. You have to mm. understand <laughs> the parents and the parents have to be on board. And, all, and it, it's, it's so true that, you know, and, and again, this is what Tom doesn't know that he's saying, but he's actually saying is like the, 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 you can coach a kid who has great parents because the parents will be on your side as a coach. And, 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 what what we've turned now, parents are all adversarial. They're adversarial with teachers. They're adversarial with anybody that criticizes their kids because their kids are so fragile. And and I, I you know that generation, we're all just old guys whining about the way things used to be. But this generation is just soft and it's uncoachable and well, it's un you know. Go ahead, Jason. You make a great point. And, and again, Tom Brady's father. He's been pretty outspoken at times, but I think he's laid back uh, because he realizes, you know what, I don't want to get my son into too much trouble, okay? But he's shown pretty good restraint. I go in a lot of these Miami Hurricane spaces and other ones, and it never fails. The parents that go on there that are very boisterous and loud and complain, it never works out. In fact, they are the ones that end up transferring out and hitting the portal after a year or two. And, and my view is this, as a parent... Given what is out there with social media and dealing with the public, I, I wouldn't even go on those spaces. And if I did, I would never request a microphone and say anything except go team and then drop back out. And, and I just think you know, that is a part of it, that Tom Brady is from a different generation. I mean, think about this, Jason. Tom Brady was a part of that 1997 Michigan co-national title team, which meant I believe his freshman year, was 1995 or 96. Jason, that's 30 years ago. So he himself now is from that old generation. He's pretty much from our generation. He really is. I almost, you know, I left Ann Arbor, what, in 1994. So I just mm -hmm. barely missed uh, Tom Brady. But uh, thank you, Steve. Uh, great job as always. Uh, I want to remind you guys, Prize Picks is America's number one fantasy sports app. Right now, Prize Picks will match your first deposit of up to $100. Just download the Prize Picks app and use my promo code FEARLESS 
That's Code Fearless on Prize Picks for a first deposit match of up to $100. Prize Picks. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. Must be present in certain states. Visit prizepicks.com for restrictions and details. Prize Picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. Thank you for watching. Like what you saw? Hit that like button, subscribe, and check out the full episode by clicking the link below.